Hey guys, welcome back. Let's look at this cloud shader that you see in front of you, right here, and just kind of see how it works, what the properties are, and what you can expect when you download this, or if you download this, you can put it in your project. Alright, so let's take a look at this. Okay, so we have it here. If you go into the cloud shader folder that would be in your project files, you can go down to shaders, clouds, I've already opened it up here. And this is just the shader graph itself that you can examine and tweak things, change things. It's got these little boxes. I forgot what those are called right now. <laughs> but these boxes or whatever that kind of try to explain it a little bit. This is affecting the bass noise, all that stuff. Okay. So that's right there. Okay. So if we go over to the cloud disk prefab, that contains the mesh right here. This is the mesh, and then the material is on the mesh. So we can open this up, drop down the surface inputs. That's what's going to be changing the look of the material, or of the shader, rather. And there's quite a few options here you can tweak and to try to get exactly how you want it. But I'll just show you some of the main ones, and then you can go explore the other ones if you'd like. But these are the main ones. So the first main property here is the noise height. This, as you can see, affects the height of the noise. Um, it kind of makes sense. So you can see, I mean, that doesn't look like clouds, but I mean, you can make it look like anything else in your game that you wanted. Or you can drop it low, make it go kind of inverted there. That's actually kind of cool. But this is what, so this just affects the height of the clouds themselves, which is based off noise, right? So this is going to just affect the height of the clouds. That's what that is. These next two are probably my favorite of them all. I don't know, the fade might be my favorite, I don't know. But these are up there. So the color of the peak, color peak here, that is going to determine, surprise, surprise, what color all the peaks of the clouds are. So you can see, well, you can't really see, but there's the little valleys and then there's the mountains, kind of. So peak color is going to define what color the peaks are. So if we change this to a red, let's say, now all the high spots are going to be red. See that? Same thing with the color valley. You can change the color just like that. All right. To be like that. That looks almost like a sunset. But that one has a very great effect on how your game would look, how the clouds look. Just changing that one field, you can leave everything else at the default, and this would just add a ton to your game. Okay, next let's talk about base scale. So if you change it at all, it has huge dramatic effects, and that's not what you want for your game. You want to just barely change this at all. So if I change it, for instance, to 0.2 or 0.5, you can see it makes everything just smaller. Okay, so it's, there's going to be a lot more peaks and a lot more valleys. And the same thing goes if you go the other way. Now there's only like one peak and one valley there. I mean, it just changes how many hills and valleys there are total. So if you like a lot of them, you could put this to two or three or whatever. One, I felt like it was pretty good. Base speed. So this is going to affect how fast your clouds are. So if we go down here, just like that, and we increase this to 50, guess what? The clouds are moving twice as fast. Let's see, 100, 1,000, 1,000. You get the idea. Okay, anyway. So that also is going to affect kind of the feel or the mood of the game, how fast the clouds are moving. All right, the next one, let's do emission strength here. And that is going to affect the 
light that appears to be coming off of the clouds. So this is low, clouds are really dark. But if this is high, it'll be like the sun, which is not a typical cloud. But if that's what you want for a game, go for it, I say. Okay, this is a really important one, curvature radius. So if you notice, these clouds are not perfectly flat. If they were perfectly flat, oops, or, you know, almost, and you go in the center, you're doing your game and everything, and you, and you kind of look around and you're like, that doesn't look very good because you can see the end of the clouds. That's not really what you want. So if we have curvature radius of, I think it was 2000 before, you can see it creates a bowl effect. If I put this more like a thousand, you can see, whoa, it really curves up. So that way, and when you're in the clouds, you won't actually be able to see out of the clouds, which just really makes it look much better. So if we do this, the higher this number is, the lower the number is, the more like a bowl it is. And the higher it is, the more flat it is. So this way, when you're here, you can't see to the edge, and it just makes it look like you're in a bunch of clouds. They go on forever. That's a really important one. I like that one. Okay, next one here. Fresnel power. That kind of like bloom, um, but you can just play, play around with this. Just to try to get the best look that you can for your clouds. All these properties are up to you to tweak however you want, and the goal is just to make it look good. So you don't have to stick with the defaults. If you want to stick with defaults, that's perfectly fine. Do it. Looks good to you. Same thing with this one here. You can just drag these fields to the left, to the right, and increase it, and decrease it, and you can just see all the effects that there's, it, does, it does, and just tweak that if you'd like. Okay, the last one here, which is, I don't know, the coolest probably, is the fade depth. So this, as you can see right here, um, has this really cool like cloud misty fade effect, which if you increase this, you can just see farther and farther and farther. It looks really nice. Um, if you don't have any, it's okay, but it's not, it's not as cool as it could be. So we put this back, you can see, ah, that's so cool, so satisfying. So those are the main properties for the shader. Let's really quickly go into our scenes here. This is in the demo scene. Um, let's go and just create a there it is. test scene. Nice spell, a test scene. And this I'm just going to show you how easy it is to set this up. Super easy. Okay, so if we go into prefabs here, you can drag in this cloud disk prefab and voila, it's already set up, it's got the material on it, already looking like a cloud. Um, so, okay, here's a note. You can see the clouds do not look right in the camera. You can see this is at the same view, I just made it the same view, and we can see way more over here than we can here. Um, and that's due to the fact that clipping planes um, and what that is, is it decides how far the camera can look before it just stops seeing things anymore. So we need to put this up a little bit higher so that we can see all the clouds. Now, if your view of your clouds are not, is not going to be having to see the whole thing, then you don't need to do that. But mine, right now at least, you have to see the whole thing. So Also, there's the near, which is a similar thing. It's just how close. I'll render things. So that's what that is. Okay, so now here's an important note. You might have noticed that this does not look as good as the other scene did. Um, because it's, you know, high exposure, all that. Now, that can be tweaked if you go into the cloud disk material, you change all this stuff. Right? But I've added in global volume just to make it really easy because you should have post processing in your game. It just makes your game look a lot better. So, my suggestion always have post processing. But 
this is post processing. You can just drag this in, and you can see it makes it look a lot better over here, but not over here. And that's just because you had you got to go to main camera and just check on post processing. Now it's looking a lot better. Um, you can change all this stuff if you like. Um, and then you can drag in a tower just for fun. And you can see it's got that nice fade effect. It's just so cool to look at. Put that over there. Ah, look at that. Just beautiful. Okay. So that's really how easy it is to set this up, guys. Super easy. You can tweak colors, speed, size, I mean, all sorts of stuff just to get exactly how you want it. Oh, I'm not going to save this. But it's really easy to set up, really nice to use. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that. And you can pick this up with the link in the description. Also, you can look at my itch.io page. Um, it's got all sorts of other assets on it that you might like and be interested in. Um, yeah. Please like the video and consider subscribing if you enjoyed this. And if you want to see more content like this. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. So one thing I forgot to note is that if you download this, you'll get a zip file that will include the Unity package and also the Blender file for this disk. Just like that, alright? That'll be included in the zip file for you as well. Yep. Alright, cheers.